It's still the morning show here on Arise News, and now time to take a look at news stories making headlines around the globe. The Tripartite Committee on National Minimum Wage said at the weekend that organized labor should reconsider the amount it was demanding as national minimum wage based on current realities. Chairman of the committee, Goni Aji, told the news agency of Nigeria in Abuja that labor should exercise more flexibility in its negotiation based on current economic considerations and non-monetary incentives which the federal government had so far provided for workers. However, a chieftain of People's Democratic Party, Chief Sonny Onwesoke, berated Labour, claiming Nigeria Labour Congress and Trade Union Congress have been selfish in their negotiation for minimum wage for workers. Onwesoke said at the weekend in Asaba that the Labour unions had ignored the effect of their wage demand on private sector workers and people in the informal sector, who he said formed the largest workforce in the country. Right, Rufai... Is labor being selfish? Are they inconsiderate of the realities of the highest employers of labor, in this case the private sector? Uh, your take on this story, please. No, I don't think they're being selfish. I think they have a hand on the reality of what is happening. They're also being considerate. This is a labor that came down from 615 and is ready to negotiate, that came down to 250 and wants a reasonable amount further. And I understand the pain of the organized private sector. I've constantly here been speaking for them. But the truth has to, also has to be said. You need to pay people something decent, one, to be able to cater to their needs, two, to be able to jumpstart the economy, three, to be able to afford people the same disposable income that the private sector needs to be able to buy their goods and services. I mean, the reason why Nigeria is suffering today is because there's a debt in disposable income. Look at the exit notes of people like Diageo. Look at the exit notes of companies that are leaving the country. Apart from currency fluctuation, it's disposable income. See, I was talking to one of the biggest advertisers, somebody that worked in one of the biggest advertisers, company in this country, a telecom company, was telling me that 2016, their budget for advertising was 12 billion. Ask me how much that budget is to Diageo. 600 million naira. That's one of the biggest telcos around. And it shows things have plummeted. Let's not deceive ourselves. So there's no disposable income. Even we in the television sector, we're suffering because it's only when companies have disposable income, they advertise. So for a version of 12 billion to 600 million, and God knows over 100 stations or more in Nigeria, we have to scamper for that bigger budget. And these are the biggest advertisers. So for you to be able to jumpstart the economy, you need disposable income. It's a, an economy where disposable income is stifled. And the PDP chieftain that is saying that, I, I mean, I don't know from what side he's speaking. He's in the same country that Salah Ram is close to half a million. I mean, I was just telling Matthew before we came on there about one Ram we bought many years ago in Udubulu called Singa was a Wuda ram, like they call it the breed, it's a Wuda breed. And it was just 17,000 naira. And that's what we are buying for half a million. This was many years ago. So you can see how things have plummeted. Cost of bag of rice plus 90,000. I'm not saying they're going to buy rice every time. But I say something decent, at least I can bop up their wage in such a way that they can interact. And that 62,000 that President Tinubu, they first agreed on, might not really cut it. He also talked about the fact that government, the, I'm talking about the PDP a chief now, talking about that government has made them up with the wage award. What is the wage award of 35,000 going to do? He said government has provided free transportation with CNG. But how many CNG buses have we seen? He said free train ride. How many people are getting on the train? How many people the train were able to take out once in Abuja? He said refinery project. Which refinery? That's, they said it was going to be completed by December. They are still telling us mechanical completion half year. Even Dangote refinery, crude is a problem. It has to buy crude from abroad. So we can see the myriads of challenges. And at the same time, these government officials don't want to sacrifice. And that's why when they release a salad day message and are saying sacrifice, I say, these leaders don't know what it costs. Because if they know what it costs, sacrifice, they will not spend 21 billion to finish a vice presidential house at a time we are suffering. 
when it's not, it's, it's that there's no place for the vice president to stay. They will not spend, they will not be talking about buying new private jets for president and vice president at the time. Like, so they don't know what sacrifice. The lawmakers will not collect the money over 160 million to buy cars. So Labour is not asking for too much. Labour is just saying, let us breathe. It's not too much to ask for. I know it's tough for the organized private sector. Yes, it's because of the policies of this same government that made it tough. You floated a currency where you had no fundamentals to be able to defend. And look at it today. Companies that had big, big earnings last year are all declaring losses. And that's why when Mr. Baron Anuga reacts to uh, uh, New York Times, I say, you don't need to react. President Tinubu's policies plunged us into these problems. He said he's removed subsidies. Today, we don't know what's going on with subsidy. We are seeing on the government plan that subsidy is still being paid. Since he, when he came in, inflation was 22%. Today, it's over 33.9%. He's added over 11% to the inflation. Cost of living has gone up. Somebody was telling me, Abuja, that we all know that things are cheap, closer to farms. Three carrots, 1,000 naira. So people that are even substituting uh, tomato, tomato carrot. for, for carrots. Carrot is, ex carrot is gold now. Three carrots, 1,000 naira. Not even big carrots. I know these politicians don't go to the market. We, we go to the markets. We know how these things are. I mean, just let people breathe. I'm sure kukumba will soon go up in price now. The same kukumba that they are saying they're trying to substitute. People are doing all sorts. I read an article about the other day on VO News about popo to still make stew. So you think labor just wants to ask for this? Go and look at the cost of living trajectory. Let's be realistic. I know it's going to affect because the, the private sector, their cost of production, most of their warehouses are filled with goods. People don't buy because people don't have disposable income. So this is just the first step in wrapping up disposable income. Nigeria has become a sachet economy. Look, here the things Tilewa Adibajo was saying on another channel the other day that went viral. We can't afford to make this continue now. All right, Dr. Bati. Okay, this story is taken from the list story of uh, this day this morning. And uh, the chairman of the 37 person tripartite committee reportedly gave an interview to BBC. And that was where he made the statement that. Uh, Organized labor should consider economic realities in the country. And what are those economic realities that he told BBC? He said that the government is already doing a lot uh, for organized labor, including the 35,000 naira that federal you know, uh, staff were promised uh, by the federal government, the 25,000 naira uh, for 1.5 million households, vulnerable households, Conditional cash transfer of about 25 billion, 100 billion uh, naira uh, for um, uh, fuel to gas kits, conversion of vehicles, and uh, you know the procurement and the deployment of uh, vehicles powered by uh, compressed natural gas. He also pointed out the fact that government has provided uh, train service and subsidize so many other things, including the distribution of grains to address the issue of uh, food insecurity. So he listed, he provided a catalog of some of the measures, social protection programs, interventions by the federal government of Nigeria, and that organized labor should take this into consideration. And should also uh, take a look at the fact that what the government has done is to move from 25% increase to 35%. In other words, in his view, what government has done, the offer of 62,000 naira is adequate and that organized labor should be considered. Now, on this issue, we seem to be going round and round in circles. Because where we are at this moment now is that the matter is now on the desk of the president, President Bola Tinubu. And President Bola Tinubu at the dinner, the Democracy Day dinner said, the federal government of Nigeria will only pay what he can afford to pay. That looks like the president himself has more or less closed the gate for further negotiations. However, organized labor is saying that uh, they are not taking a final rigid position 
on 250,000 Naira, but that they will not collect 62,000 Naira, uh, you know, as minimum wage because of the, uh, of the what uh, Joe Ajiro, the NLC president, calls a gulf rather than a margin in terms of trying to resolve the negotiations. Now, what are the issues here? I don't think it is fair for government to blame organized labor for realities, for what the uh, chairman of the Trapata community called economic realities in the country. Inflation is 33.95%, according to the uh, National Bureau of Statistics. It's not organized labor that caused that inflation. That inflation came about because of how the economy has been mismanaged by our leaders. Unemployment rate is very high. The cost of fuel is very high. The cost of transportation is very high. All of this, again, as a result of policies, you know, are introduced by government without looking at basic fundamental issues in the economy. Economists will tell you that first subsidy removal is a good idea. Uh, you know, uh, imagine the uh, multiple exchange rates that we had, you know, is a good idea. But that government needed to take certain steps before introducing those policies. It is not organized labor that should be blamed for the, you know, distortions in the policy uh, making uh, process. And now that the matter is before the uh, president, and uh, we have been told that the president will make a recommendation and the matter will go before the uh, National Assembly, I think organized labor is just waiting for that. And I don't think any amount of blackmail will be useful uh, in terms of how even the chairman of the Trapata Committee reacts. His job is already done. The report has been submitted to the president. So granting interviews all over the place is like, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know exactly. continuing the conversation after the uh, meeting uh, was over. Now, to the second person, Chief Sonwe Ono Suyeke, PDP chief, he is accusing organized labor of being selfish. And he says organized labor is behaving like the political class, like politicians, as he put it. He made a number of suggestions that he will expect organized labor to be talking more about how to reduce inflation. With due respect to the uh, <laughs> chief of Nosuke, taming inflation is not the duty of organized labor. That is the job of the, uh, uh, of the monetary side of it and the f people in charge of uh, fiscal policies. Organized labor exists to defend the interest of workers. So I think the chief got it wrong there. And then he said uh, uh, um, uh, they are behaving in a selfish manner. Well, that they didn't consider the interest of people who are not on the payroll, people in the market, traders, artisans, and all of that. Well, labor has made it clear repeatedly that it is fighting for everybody's interest and that it's not as if this is only about organized labor. Now, there have been many reactions, like Chief Unosuke's, uh, you know, uh, reaction on this issue of minimum wage in the last week or so. Now, the, um, uh, a church called uh, Covenant Christian Center, led by Pastor Bojo Yemadi, organized uh, its uh, regular annual program called The Platform. And this issue of the minimum wage was some of the... Uh, issues considered on that platform. I take just two out of the many speakers. Now, uh, Professor Chukuma Suludo, who should know, being an economist, having played a major role in managing the economy of Nigeria before, said he pities President Tinubu, and he provided the calculations and concluded that he doesn't know where the money will come from. Now, if you look, if you do all the calculations, what organized labor is asking for is even more than the entire budget of Nigeria. By the time you do the uh, calculations, where would they get the money from? But that in any case, he understands the fact that laborers deserve their wages. They should ask for living wages and that he has no problem with that. But that he thinks that the president is in a very tight corner. How he dances out of it, how he resolves it, will be interesting to see. Now, uh, former governor of Lagos State, former uh, minister of works, uh, Baba Tunde Raji Fashola, was also on that uh, panel. And he was uh, making the point about, look, what are we actually asking for? 
are Nigerian workers asking for wages or salaries? Because in other jurisdictions, wages are considered on a hourly basis. If you work, say for example, in the private sector, well, your employer may say, please, you can't do more than three hours, and you get paid for that. But in Nigeria here, wages, salaries are not linked to productivity. And this is the same argument that many commentators on the subject have made, that we are not talking about productivity. We are just talking about salaries. And that in any case, many of these people arguing for salaries, they are more or less asking for social security. Take the civil servants. Many of the civil servants don't go to work. Some of them go to, don't even go to work on Friday. Once it is prayer time, they don't go back. Who is measuring, who is linking productivity to performance? And then in any case, you know, is it, are, we paying, are we asking for wages? Or are we asking for salaries? Or are we discussing social security? So there have been many perspectives on, on, on this uh, uh, subject. But the residual point, of course, is that productivity, we've been saying on this uh, table, if there is productivity, then the federal government will be able to pay. The promotion of wealth creation will be uh, you know, in a better frame. And then the states that are also supposed to pay. Many of the states have been saying they can't even pay. In fact, one state governor said the 30,000, they have not even paid it. So how are they going to pay 250,000? And the uh, governors have said 42% of the workforce will have to go. So in solving one problem, you create another. If that is uh, where the uh, chairman of the Trapata Committee is coming from, that there's still room for further dialogue, where well, then it will be making sense. But to, to say, uh, to suggest that labor is responsible uh, for this and that, no. Uh, and even Chief uh, Onosuke, no. Labor is not responsible for inflation. Labor is asking for living wage, as defined or as indicated in Section 16 of the 1999 Constitution, clearly, expressly. All right, so this um, conversation has been on the table, and rightly so. And obviously, the um, federal government or the government and organized labor and the private sector actually have not yet been able to agree on a consensus in terms of what will be the minimum wage for Nigerian workers. One of the principles of negotiation is building rapport and trust. And I believe that this is what is critically missing, especially from the perspective of organized labor, in terms of the trust that the, the, this administration or the federal government gains by its actions. How do you trust an administration or a government who says that there's no money to pay um, worker salary and yet have enough money to build houses for their principles? How do you place trust in a negotiation process where the government says there's no money, but they have money to you know, to, for expensive and large uh, entitlements and, and uh, you know, benefits. How do you trust such a process? And that's why it's difficult when, you know, the government comes out to say that we don't have enough money, you're being selfish, and so on. And then we see such largesse, and there's no fiscal responsibility or fiscal prudence. That is the challenge in a number of things when it comes to negotiations. Another principle, of course, the, a, an ideal situation for a negotiation is for a win-win situation. Unfortunately, even if the government decides to pay 62,000, no, there are no winners in that particular decision because um, the, the Nigerian worker suffers, and the government itself suffers because if people don't have disposable income, it would plunge the economy further to, you know, to, to, to dire situations. So if there must be a win-win, they have to go back to the negotiation table because this hasn't yet ended. And then with regards to the economic realities, everyone can feel the pinch. At least people, if you go to the market, if you look at the inflation, if you just go on the streets today where it's meant to be a celebration, Eid for uh, Muslim faithfuls, it's tempered. It was the same thing we said during the Easter celebrations. People don't have money to do anything, to do a lot of things. Disposable income is almost non-existent for, the, for a lot of people. And so when... Um, people like Alaji um, Goni comes out to say things like that. He almost demonstrates a lack of a, a, a lack of touch with people who are living daily, working daily, and have nothing to go back home to show for it. 
So it's a difficult situation, all right. We never, no one I ever said was going to be an easy process from the beginning. Because on one hand, the reality is that Nigeria is in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a I don't want to use the word broke, but when it comes to money, you can look at the debt to GDP ratio, you can see how much money we're trying to use, we're using to service debt out of the uh, revenue that we're coming, and we still have a revenue challenge. So it will be a challenge in the first instance, but it must also be seen across board. The sacrifice must be seen right from the top and then trickling down, and everyone knows that we're all in this, and it is a temporary situation. I was speaking to Dr. Emekale. Um, over the last few days and he was talking just had an opportunity to ask him about his view on the economy and he said something really um, important I'll paraphrase because I can't say it word for word but around the fact that when you set certain policies you have to be realistic and have measured the extent of the impact of the, of the policy you're setting you know that it's going to get very hard before it gets better but don't be moved to change position at the slight you know um, angst of the people because you have a clear focus when you make a policy and then you somersault or you reverse, it shows, it demonstrates that you didn't even know what you were doing in the first place or that you were not serious about it. But whilst you're doing it, you are communicating with the people, you're carrying people along, and all the markers that you set along the way are happening so that people can trust the process. Everyone can see what is happening. But unfortunately, if we see that policies or, think, or positions are being taken and then in a, in a second instance, you say we don't have money, but you are doing all these, you know, you're having, you, you don't, demonstrate the fact that we don't have money as a nation it's difficult to convince the people that nigeria doesn't have enough money you know to pay the people my um, suggestion is this even though it said oh they've made conclusions now it's on the table of the president it's now down to the president to either review this process and understand the reality of the nigerian worker so that people don't are not plunged into further poverty by the amount of money that they take home. And even very importantly, even though the PDP chief chain, he, he, you know, he, he said, I, I would not agree with the word selfish. He makes a fair point. There are other fundamentals that we ought to be, um, we ought to be advocating for, that we ought to be speaking up against, so that the amount of money that you take home can take you somewhere. If the economy were, were in a better position, Nigerians will have a better, even if it's 62,000 hours, 70, 100,000 hours, you're able to go to the market and purchase things. That's what the people want. It's not about the money. It's not about, oh, 250,000, 615. It's just the fact that people want to have enough money to look at themselves and look at their family members. So can that happen in a nation like this? So a lot of conversations happening. I don't think we're, we're there yet. I don't think 62,000 Naira will cut it for the Nigerian worker. And I believe that they should actually review that wage in, in a way that would favor both the people and the government.